And I, I've been praying to the Lord to send now a season of prophetic grace to come to the house. And when I heard Corbus was coming, I, I nagged him. I was like a dog with a bone. Corbus, where are you staying? Corbus, uh, when are you you're coming? Are you free? Um, you know, will you, will, you, will you come visit us? And eventually he said yes. And today I am blessed to have him here. So, my brother, uh, you have an open door, and I know there's an open window from heaven over this place. Speak as the Lord directs, and you have the liberty. And may the Lord really bless us as a people. So, won't you welcome Quibus Besedenot to come and speak to us today? Good morning. Hope you're well this morning. It's a lovely day in Cape. I've been here since Wednesday and I've seen a couple of seasons. <laughs> and I say today is a beach day. <laughs> you can go to the beach with this weather. Hope you're well. Uh, we are well. We are, we are here since Wednesday. Um, and um, we, had, we came down for the POA. And uh, we also specifically came down to spend time with our brothers and um, fellowship because we, do, we, we for us, our fellowship and our relationships, is, um, there's a high premium on them. And sometimes we, we cost us money, we pay money for that, and then we come together, spend time together, and then um, we may escape down up and then we move back again. <laughs> police, is, police is looking for a couple of guys, but we are gone. And, uh, you know, we... We out of town and out of city, but we fellowship together. We come together. We talk together, and that's where very strong impartations take take place, and just the informal discussions that we have with one another. Um, and then the, we value the POA when we have a father speaking to us. We have a common spiritual father, um, like you heard that we are in. We are. I'm a South African, uh, but, um, and I come out of the business world. Um, and then the Lord, we became born again, and then the Lord called us into ministry, studied theology, and then the Lord called us into Botswana. Um, and since all the time that we've been there, so we've journeyed different journeys in the nation there, um, and we have been building in the nation. It's, it's, for us, it's not an easy build. My, my church is 98% Botswana people, black people, one of speaking people, um, and uh, I, I have a couple of whites, and I have a couple of colored guys, and I don't have an Indian. I had, they moved. <clears throat> uh, there's not a lot of Indians in, in Botswana, um, but we're not trying to be cosmopolitan, or uh, we, we take the people that the Lord has given us. So uh, we, I'm with Tamu now, Kala myself is with Tamu 18 years. Um, in the apostolic, so we've journeyed together. I've been sliced up, chopped up, and all of that to the period of time. Um, meaning is just the, the Lord continuously readjust you as you're going forward. Um, so it's an honor for me to bring to be with you here this morning. Um, before I came down, the Lord was spoke, speaking to me about the Cape and how the Lord was coming to strengthen the hand of the Cape. And then the Lord spoke to me about your congregation and about other congregations here. And, and then the process came that he invite, asked me to come and speak, and then I felt the tug to come. Because we also built relationships to coming together, be together, make our bonds stronger, make it more effective in terms of what we do. So today, <clears throat> I'm not going to give you a teaching I'm not coming here to unfold and unpack a teaching. I, I want to speak forth to what I see. I want to declare to you what I see. Um, 
and would like you, I want to paint some pictures for you, and I want to download to you what I see. Uh, God used prophets with, with, with different purposes. Uh, we are a company of prophets in our family, of which I am one, um, and we all, our graces are distinctly different. Uh, God used me, he sends me into a congregation, and the Lord used me under, under leaders, the Lord used me to activate people into ministry, uh, used me to activate um, people in terms of the giftings and all of that. Um, I can see people that need to be in ministry, those kind of things, the Lord used me for that. So I think that's on the heart of the Lord, even with you guys, he wants to de decree and declare over the house, you know, and some people that what he wants to do. But <clears throat> we as prophetic people, um, see, you know, we, we work a lot on symbolism. Oh, well, I need to mention that I'm married to one wife. <laughs> I just can't forget her. Gala, um, it's a blonde lady. Um, she's running the church today on that side. I spoke to her this morning, and then she says to me, I said, don't forget to pick me up tonight at the airport. She says, how do you know I'm still in the country? How do you know I didn't leave already? I says, shut sure. It's tough. <laughs> I hope I'm going to find you there. Um, she, she said the Lord didn't send you to Cape Town to come here and to be here because she would not have gone back. She would have stayed. The Botswana is very hot, um, very warm. Um, and our, sometimes our spiritual atmosphere is, is very tough and sticky and witchcraft and those things are extremely strong in our, in our environment that we work with. So it's not always so pleasant. Um, but we do what the Lord tells us to do. It shapes us, it forms us. And more than often when you're busy with something difficult, um, it's to form you, to shape you. And then, so by the way, then the Lord will use it as ministry also. But you are the biggest culprit in there, the stone with all the sharp edges that is forming and rolling and, and, and all of those kind of things and bring you to a better place. So in terms of you as a family and as a house, um, you know, if you look at your building and what you, how you've taken it and you've built a certain place, and then the Lord sends then a prophetic voice to you. Uh, so for me, uh, I would ask the Lord, okay, Lord, why in this hour? What do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish? Because I'm going to strengthen my brother's hand. Um, strengthen your hand, strengthen the hand of the ministry. But the Lord reminding me of the book of Nehemiah and Ezra where they were building, they were rebuilding the temple. And the Lord sent forth a decree to, to King Cyrus. And King, the King Cyrus took the decree and declared that the Lord has told him to rebuild Jerusalem. And he declared it to everybody. And then people responded and they went and they started to rebuild but they built up to a certain point, then there was adversaries against them. And the adversary has brought them to a standstill. And they stopped building. Um, and then what happened is the Lord sent prophets. In your own time, you can go and read it. Then the Lord sent prophets, and prophets declared, decreed again, prophesied over the work. And because prophecy brings encouragement, bring upliftment, um, brings exhortation, but it also decreed the heart of the Lord in, in a moment and in time. So when, when the Lord decrees something, meaning I can give a word, it, and that word is a decree, um, then that stands in the spirit, and it's like you have a gun with a rope, and you, have, and you shoot it into a wall, and it's stuck, the rope is stuck, and you just keep on taking the rope, and it doesn't matter how the wind blow you, and, and, and the sea will take you, and you swing this way, and you swing that way, but you go straight forward to the place where the, um, the anchor into the, in the wall is. That's how prophetic work work. So we speak a decree. We speak a word. Um, and that is like a spiritual line that anchors in the purpose of God. And then you journey. Um, and it makes things available. 
and it brings things coming to pass. So more than often, you need uh, in your journey a decree, a saying, a speaking of the Lord to activate and to quicken things in the spirit. So you have a, we talk about a kairos, you know a kairos is a time in the Lord. So we can have different kairoses, but um, when the Lord has a kairos, um, and I'm sensing that with you, when I came into the building and uh, um, I could see that you've, you've built and you've built well, but you, could, you were not able to complete everything yet. So now you're on a place where you want to finish the work, um, and it's possible that some things are standing up against you, but the Lord brings forth a decree. The Lord, the Lord come now and establish, and this is what I feel I want to communicate with you as a house. Certain things you will recognize, and certain things I want to confirm to you, um, your purpose, your plan, the plan that the Lord has for you, your uniqueness in our family. We all are apostolic. We all speak apostolic doctrine and all of that, but we have all uniquenesses that comes forth. And, and my uniqueness and your uniqueness have got purpose. And that gives me my unique ministry. Even though we are apostolic, but my grace is prophetic, so even though I, I don't speak like Talmud speak, uh, even though I can teach doctrinally, um, but then I, I come from a prophetic perspective even though I'm part of an apostolic community. Does it make sense? So you have a uniqueness <clears throat> that is in the apostolic community, and that, that needs to be made known now. I believe the Lord wants to declare it. He wants to make it known. He wants to declare who you are. He wants it to be standing in the spirit. It's a banner. It's, a na it's like a banner with a name on it. So when the army of the Lord will move, and when the tribes of Israel would move, every tribe had a banner. So, and on the banner, their the name and insignia was, and everybody could see, this is Judah, or this is Levi. And they would move, and they would keep it up. Um, but this is, a, this is part of identity. So <clears throat> the Lord is now coming in a vital time and in a vital hour in, in your journey, and he's coming and making known your identity. Because, sure, this place is too small. Yeah, this place is far too small for what you're going to do. Yeah, really, I, really, really. I saw a different place. Um, I, I thought you were going to take me there. <laughs> really, I saw a different place, also built up with grass and things around, um, big, a big auditorium different kind of things of teachings and all, places for teachings and things and stuff. I saw that. Uh, so this is not the end. This is not the end. This is the beginning of, of, of many things that needs to happen. I, 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 so when, I, when we drove up, the house is so close by, and we drove up, I said, oh, well, we're here. So I thought we, we were going to drive a bit. Um, but then, you know, uh, we came here, and I said, okay. Um, but uh, th there's more to what the Lord wants to do than, than what you are currently doing. You're going to grow, you're going to grow horizontally, and you're going to grow vertically. Uh, it's nothing to do with that lady that did the invocation this morning. It's not nothing to do. We're not going to grow sideways. <laughs> you don't need to worry. I'm not prophesying wrong. <laughs> um, you're going to grow in numbers. Um, you will grow in numbers, and you will grow like a, like a tap that is tripping. Um, so continuously you will grow with new people. Um, so, you got to, so that's why now the Lord needs to get leaders ready, and he needs to get men and women ready to facilitate, to help, to build, to work, and to work with people. That's going to be very important now. So the Lord make known what is needed now in this journey. Um, the building is just so by the way. The facility is just, just by the way. It's not something that you need to be bo bo bothered around. Uh, quickly, quickly, the Lord's just going to add, bring money, and it's going to be done. Because the coin is in the fish's mouth. So the coin is within the family. The coin is within this environment. Um, it's, the coin is in your pocket. It unfortunately always worked like that. 
Not unfortunately, because you think now where I'm going to get it. But you're going to go and say to the Lord, okay, use me as a vessel. What, what can I put together? What do, you have? what do I have? What can you put in my hands to bring? Because the, the, there's now a move in the Cape. There's now a move of God in the Cape. And the Lord is, uh, the Lord is exalting himself in the Cape. And it's got nothing to do with politics. It's not connected to politics. It's, uh, the Lord is elevating the Cape. He's elevating himself in the Cape. And therefore, he had set aside certain um, houses and sons. He had set aside for him, for his purpose and for his glory, so that he will be able to come and that he's able now to facilitate those that is coming in. Um, the, the, the workings of God is unique. And the workings of God is now. It's now. We prophesied in, 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 uh, in our POA, we saw, I saw four mature sons from our family leave the congregations and relocate to the Cape to help, to come in to come and help. So for, for the work that needs to be done in the Cape, Cape area, not necessarily Cape Town, but the Cape, Cape area, uh, wherever the Lord wants to position himself strategically. Um, so you are one of those sons that the Lord has planted, and now the sun is coming forth. You understand you're an individual son, but you also understand that you are a corporate son. And you're part of the corporate family of sons. Um, and the Lord is busy moving with his son. Um, and de therefore, uh, he, on the moment, the cape is on the agenda of the Lord and, and is repositioning and realigning and bringing things together. But in the meantime, he will start bringing people in. So you have a uniqueness, um, and I'm going to speak towards that. The father of the house have a uniqueness in him, and, and I want to, you to understand that the father of the house carries the essence of the anointing and the grace that needs to be done, because he's the man that is called. And even though he and his wife is together, they both carry it together. Uh, so they have a uniqueness that comes together, they have a unique anointing. And that anointing will be dominant. And that anointing will facilitate the work. And that is unique. So I'm going to speak towards that, so that you will understand who you are. Um, and, and, and I have a word that I want to preach, and I have some prophetic words here lined up. So I'm trying to find my way where to start and and, and, and how to let make things make sense for you. Um, but you can hear my speaking. I, I'm prophesying and I'm, de I'm speaking over you. All my speaking is a declaration. All my speaking is a decree that I'm making. It's a prophetic decree. You will also find that apostles will come in and they will decree, and that's different. I'm bringing you a prophetic decree, uh, the heart of the purposes of the Lord. Now, what I'm going to do is... <clears throat> I'm going to share with you the word that the Lord gave to me for the father of the house. And from there, I will come back into the teaching because I want to teach on mercy. I want to talk on mercy. I want to open up mercy uh, to you because you're a house of mercy. You're a house of mercy. A house of mercy. Um, and, and, and so, first of all, I would like to highlight, and I would like to read from Psalm, oh, sorry, Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42 from verse 1 to 9. This is the, the word that the Lord gave to me uh, for the father of the house. Um, this is the uniqueness that he has got on his life, and this is the, how the Lord has developed him, and this is the anointing that is upon his life. Isaiah 42 verse 1 says, Behold my servant whom I uphold, my elect, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit on him. He shall bring out judgment to the nations. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoking wick he shall not quench. He shall bring out judgment to truth. He shall not fail 
nor be discouraged until he has set judgment in the earth, and the coast shall wait for his law. So says Jehovah God, he who created the heavens and stretches them out, spreading out the earth and its offsprings, he who gives breath to the people on its, on, uh, on its and spirit to those who walk in it. I, Jehovah, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand and will keep you and give you for a covenant of the people for a light of the nations. To, op to open the blind eyes to bring out the prisoners from the prison, those who sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am Jehovah, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to crave images. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare. Behold, they happen, I cause you to hear. This is what the Lord dropped in my heart for the father of the house. Um, and I, I wanted, to, I needed to share that word first so that you will understand what it is the Lord wants you to do. This house have a very strong healing grace upon him. Uh, this house have a very strong balm of Gilead anointing. Balm of Gilead anointing upon this house. So that there's a healing anointing upon this house. So and that's why this is the configuration of the Father, that the, the Lord declared the Father walks in this declaration. So there's government. He, there's government upon the shoulder. So they will walk in the nations. They will speak to nations. They, their government will be to speak into nations, into different dimensions around them. But the important scripture that relates significantly to the house is verse 3. A bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoking wick he shall not quench. He shall bring out judgment to truth. That means this. There's a lot of people being hurt. There's a lot of people oppressed and people that are destroyed. And because of the anointing and the grace of this house, many from outside will venture and journey in. Many that are sent in ministry will come and be restored. And you will declare over them their sins are forgiven. Some that has made mistakes in ministry will come and they will sit and be healed and realigned and sent out. So then many that, are corrupt, that is bankrupt will come and come and sit and they will find the healing and they will be restored back again and they will be relaunched back again. So do you understand what we're talking about? So there is a troubled people um, that needs a covering. And this is a, this is a unique covering of restoration. Our vision of, of our family, global family, is reach, restore, reform. So part of that is we restore. So we cannot just run ahead. There's people that just make mistakes, but they're good people. And so the Lord need them to come into places. You need people to... to to be restored that, um, that has been involved in drugs. Many of you, many, many guys that is, that is selling drugs is shop entrepreneurs. They're just selling the wrong product. I've seen that one of our houses in, in our family of churches, um, they, they, they have that where men and women that have sold drugs, they were drug pushers today, they have businesses. And they were restored back, um, and they came out of prison, and they're in business now, and they're trading, because they understand buying and selling is just the wrong product. So you understand what I'm talking about. <clears throat> but when that individual comes in, that individual comes in with spirits. They carry certain spirits upon their lives. And 
they, they need to be cleansed. They need to be cleaned. But they need to be loved in wisdom. And so what do you do when prostitutes comes, come in? Because the only way that they can, the only way that they can earn money is the way that they earn money. So you need to be able to supply and support them and sustain and maintain them financially until you get them into a working space. So this is the same with guys that, that, that is dealing with drugs and all of those kind of things. So I'm speaking generally to you. So, uh, but one of your main things you will be known for is, uh, is pastors being restored and men and women being restored for ministry. Coming and sitting and just being here, coming and being restored. People that have callings, but their callings are dormant. They will be coming, they will come in here and to be restored. So, you're, you will be a financial hub. You'll be strong financially, a strong financial hub, um, because you can need a lot of money to do a lot of things and help a lot of people. So the Lord opens up the financial windows of heaven over this house. So over and above that you have your own uniqueness and you walk in a certain financial walk, I see now that the Lord, uh, in the heart of the Lord is Bring a special anointing on finances. Special anointing on entrepreneurship. Special anointing of restoration to restore people, to love people, to care for people, and to, to bring them back. Our, you, 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 you live and you stay in, a, in an environment where the economy is, is conducive and is working to a certain extent, but there's still a lot of poor people. So... Um, in your time of restoration, the, 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 it's going to be needed that people need to be helped. One of the major <clears throat> challenges or things that we are challenged with is that in our season, our season is not miracle-driven, even though we do see miracles happen. But it's not that I call the, he, the sick out now and pray for them, and we see the miracles, and then by that draw people. So... Um, this season is not necessarily driven by the miraculous. And therefore, part of the criticism that we get is that, where's the Lord? You know, you guys are all word and so dry and, and there's nothing else. But it is the love that we have for one another. Listen to me very careful. It is the love that we have for one another that proves that we are not dictators, that we can give selfishly, that we can care for people, love people, and establish. You see, and that, that is, the, that is the, the, the anointing and the grace that is upon this configuration in this, this, this house. So I want to talk to you. I want to highlight mercy to you. I want to show you something about mercy um, and highlight the principle of mercy. And, the, and for that, I, I want to... Go back to Exodus 25, from verse 17. Um, I, I want to read that to you. And, and, and um, this is where the Ark of the Covenant are being built. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to go to the mercy seat. And from the mercy seat, we'll talk on mercy. Uh, because you're a house of mercy. Grace and mercy is two different things. Exodus 25, 17. You shall make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two and a half cubits shall be its length and a cubit and a half its width. And you shall make two cherubim of gold of a hammered work. You shall make them as the two ends of the mercy seat. Make one cherubim at one end and the other cherubim at the other end. You shall make the cherubim at the two ends of it in one piece with the mercy seat. And the cherubim shall stretch out its wings above, covering the mercy seat with their wings. And they shall face one another. The faces of the cherubim shall be towards the mercy seat. 
you shall put the mercy seat on top of the ark, and in the ark you shall put the testimony that I will give you. And there I will meet with you, and I will speak with you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim, which are on the ark of the, of the testimony, about everything which I will give you in commandment to the children of Israel. So, let's go to get the picture of, of the Ark of the Covenant in your head. So, let's say this, the pulpit is the box. So, here you have the mercy seat on top here. On top of the mercy seat is two angels with the wings covering um, the mercy seat. Then the Lord said, below the wings, above the mercy seat, the place called there. From there I will speak to you intimacy. And from there I will command to talk to you. And that's where the Shekinah glory was shining. But now, let's define mercy. Let's look at mercy. And, and, and mercy, we know, has to do with it with somebody big grab you in the throat and want to sort you out. He says, please have mercy on me. Forgive me. I'm sorry. Give, have mercy. Have mercy. And then the guy can let you potentially go. Um, but the definition of mercy, it is Compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom, is, whom it is within one's power to punish or to harm. So there's like one or two keys in, in mercy. Listen carefully again. It is compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or to harm. So, there's a condition to mercy. Mercy is a compassion and it's, and it's forgiveness. Uh, mercy is also kindness, goodness. This, everything that's locked up in compassion, you can open up. So, when, some, when somebody comes and it's in my power to be kind, to be compassionate, to be forgiving. I release mercy. Now we, in the body of Christ, has got that power. Like in the office of a prophet, we know, I am confident in that, I can decree. I can speak. It doesn't help me to go and decree empty Words when the Lord has not sent me, so I don't keep myself busy with foolish things. But when I need to be able to speak forth, I can decree. But tomorrow, I'm with my friend, friends and my buddies, and we do normal things, and, and, and you're just a normal individual. And we continue on. So we know who we are, and we know what kind of strength we have, and we know what kind of abilities we have. Now, this is a house of mercy. That means a house of compassion. It is a house of forgiveness. So, as we in the prophetic can decree and declare something over somebody, you can also declare over somebody that their sins are forgiven. So once I needed to prophesy over an eldership in a church, and... The, the, the one lady was standing there. She was, she was, moving, she was moving to the end. She was moving. She, was, uh, she couldn't go and sit because I called the elders. But she's moving. She, she's not standing still. She's, you know, she's trying to think if maybe I'll forget about her. And, and, and I'm, I'm moving her like in a corner. And the closer I come, the closer I come, she will go like this. And she was wringing her hands and all of that. She was a drug pusher. Before. Now she's an elder. But she says, I cannot believe that the Lord will declare anything good over me. So we had to say to her, your sins are forgiven. You are clean. And then prophesy over her and lift her up. She, she, her face changes. Her demeanor changes. Can you understand what mercy is? You have that ability. That is in this house. That is when people make mistakes. And you can come and say, I cover your mistake. 
obviously, when someone has made a mistake and, and they admit it and he says, I'm wrong, you, you know, it's difficult to help somebody that is locked up in a mistake. Sometimes, so that is very important that, that we would understand who you are um, uh, uh, and, uh, and see this. Mercy, mercy is the compassion of God, the kindness of God. Now, the mercy seat was the place where the high priest will come, and he would sprinkle the blood on it once a year. So the mercy seat is symbolic of Christ. Christ is the propitiation of, of God. They talk also about the, the seat of propitiation, the mercy seat. So look at this. Christ, then, is the compassion and the mercy of God. If you want to symbolize the Ark of the Covenant. Now see this. Inside of the box is, is a golden pot of manna. There's the rod of Aaron that is budded. And the law of tablets is there. But where does God speak forth from? He speaks forth from below the wings, above the mercy seat. From that space, I will speak to you. So, we have a grace carrier. Grace needs to filter through mercy before it can come forth. The, the leadership, the, the, fathering, the fathering that we experience uh, must come and filter through mercy and then comes forth. The law, the rules, the regulations, the concepts, the designs, all must surface up and come to mercy and come through mercy and function then on the earth. Everything that comes from God and even from us that is from God, we all, everything that we do, everything that we say, everything that we function within is drenched in mercy. Powerful, am I right? So that's who you are. That is who you are. And, and that is now, that is how you then, that is how you help your neighbor. That is how you fix something for somebody. And this, they will know that you are my disciples by the love that you have for one another. Does it start making sense now? So, it is not always that rude and hard word that we have of correction um, and all of that. So I like cycling, and, and so it's something that, a sport that I do, and it keeps my head open. Um, so I, I decided I'm going to, well, there wasn't Christian cyclers where I was, and then I, there's not a lot of cyclers, so I'm not picky. I, I cycle with the guys that is there. So when I went to cycle, I decided I'm not going to talk about the Lord, nothing. I'm just going to cycle. But then we cycle, and as we went on, this one guy we find a liking in each other and we will talk and we will cycle together regularly. So the one day he's cycling um, and he stops. He says, no, I just want to go and behind the bush, I'm back now. He never went off his bicycle. He started talking about the Lord. He says, I want to know this. How can the Lord do this? How can the Lord do that? That's unfair. I'm telling you now. I say, since when do you have all these thoughts? And he says, no, since other day. I start thinking about all of these things and so on and, and so on. So, even our normal speech, our speaking, is drenched in grace. But grace is filtered through mercy. There is kindness, acceptance. Acceptance is exceptionally powerful. Just to accept the person. See then how the hurt of apartheid, part, biggest part of the hurt of apartheid was that people were never accepted who they are. They were denied. Am I right? And that's part of the big hurt that many, many people would have had. So, um, mercy, you are a church of mercy. So you are a church full of kindness and compassion. Because that, what, that is what drives the healing. That is what drives restoration. That is then when how somebody 
has gone into uh, some maybe uh, some sexual sin, fell out of ministry, repented through, through the Lord and all of that, but there's still a calling. But because of the tarnish, very few will touch such an individual. But when, you, when that individual comes, when there's wisdom, like a father, comes and says, I can work with you, come. He says, are you sorry for what you've done? I am really sorry what I've done. I've repented. They asked the Lord to forgive me. Then your sins are forgiven. You are clean. Come and sit. Let's help you to be restored. Let's get you back up into where you need to come and into the plan and the uniqueness that the Lord has for you. But what you need to understand, mercy, there's, a, there's mercy, there's a demonstration, but the mercy comes from a mercy seat. A seat is a position of authority. And they said there's one thing about mercy. It says, Compassion and forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or to harm or to do good. So that means I have the authority to heal, to restore. So think about something. M mercy, this kindness, this comes from a seat of authority. That, that comes from a posture in Christ. So, as, as sons of God, born-again Christians, we have an authority that others don't have. So we are able to express mercy to a people that others cannot express to. Because we have a level of authority that they don't have. So all people can express kindness, and they do, to one another. But there's a uniqueness in the son's configuration. Because we have Christ, the, uh, the, the, the mercy seat we have within us. He is the seat of appropri appropriation. He is the place where the blood was shed and forgiveness was given unconditional, even the Satanist that kill many people does horrible stuff, can come and say, I am sorry, Lord. Think about that. Huh? That's, that friend of mine, that's the problem that he had. He had a problem that somebody can live like a, a hooligan his whole life. On his deathbed, he gives his heart to the Lord and go to heaven. He says, that's unfair. <laughs> he says, that can't work like that. That's unfair. How does the Lord do it? And then I needed to talk to him about different things and have different discussions. And, and then we continue on again. And then he stops again. He says, it's not right, I'm telling you. <laughs> so I discovered then, you can, you can try to be dormant as much as you want. You can't hide the grace of God. Your words are drenched by, with grace. Your words are drenched by grace. And that's why when you speak to your grandchildren, speak to your children, speak to your neighbor, it's just, it's just grace that comes out. But now you understand that we, our words are laced with grace, but grace is filtered through mercy. Because grace can be destructive. The law is harsh. It's hard. Even the concepts and the designs, the things that God wants to do in the New Testament, the way to live, to function, we, can, we fail more than often in, in, in many of these things. Am I right? So you have a seat of authority, and especially when God comes to say to you, you are a house of mercy, that means within the apostolic community, there's a uniqueness within you, a unique authority that God has given you, and you function within that authority. But now you're conscious of who you are. You are conscious that um, when, when you speak, because the, the wings are symbolic of saint ones. Angels are saint ones. So these two wings that, that we see um, is, is, the, is the wings of saint ones. So these are apostles. That is the saint one, all right? 
That can also be the father of the house. He's saying to, into the house. That is the sending dimension. And the speakings that comes from the saint one, all of that is laced with grace, uh, with mercy. So the Lord is bringing to you and um, bringing a consciousness to you that, that you're a house of mercy. You're a house of kindness, compassion. And that means automatically you have oodles of patience. I have a lot of patience with, with certain people, with certain things. Some of the concepts and the, the designs are scrambled. That's why their life felt scrambled. It takes a bit of time to unwind it and, and, and to get things done. So I, I foresee that the Lord will enter into this house strongly now and readjust and realign many of you so that you will be able to receive many. Many of these, many leaders in this house, many, 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 many of you, many of you are called, many of you are just to go out and help people. You have a pastoral calling, you have an eldership calling on your life, and you will go into the streets, and very few will know what you're doing, except the body will know what you are doing. But you will heal, you will pray for the sick, they will see the physical healing, you will drive out demons, even in the house. You will, forget, you will do it so often, you will forget that you are doing it. It's also common that you're going to do it. You will take money from your own pocket, and you will give it into the houses. And so, by the way, just tell the pastor, oh, those people needed some food, the money, we bought it, we settled them, and they're going. So this is the grace that the Lord is releasing upon you. So I step now into the next dimension that the Lord speak to me about this house. I saw this house being a fruit. And the house being a fruit, and you understand these pictures? It's, 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 it's uh, prophetic sim symbols that I'm seeing. Your house being a fruit, and I see this house is now ready for the picking. And I see many come and eat of this fruit. And you are that fruit. You are that fruit. You are that fruit. And many are now going to come, and down, you are ripe, and many is going to come, and the needy is going to come now, and they're going to come and eat from you. So that means um, a fruit is never for yourself. A fruit, an uh, apple tree don't consume its own apples. Um, he carries apples, and, he, and, and people come and pick it, pick it for themselves. So you are like that now. The Lord making it known who you are. And declare unto you now who you are. You are a fruitful vine. Genesis 17, 6. This is the scripture that the Lord gave to me concerning this matter. Um, this is an anointing that's upon Pastor Charles' life. He's got the anointing of a Joseph upon his life. And Genesis 17, 6 declares this. And I will make you exceedingly fruitful, greatly so, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come out of you. Um, Genesis 49, 22. Joseph is a fruitful son, a fruitful son by a well whose branches run over the wall. This is the grace and the anointing upon this life, uh, the life of this house. It comes from the life of the Father. Are you with me? So you are a fruitful, you are a fruitful son. In your own time, study Joseph. My, it's not my purpose to open Joseph up to you, but go and check Joseph. When Joseph was born... In, from Rebekah, in the life of Jacob, he started to prosper. Go and read their, their unfolding. It's very interesting. When Joseph was born, the Lord gave him the creative ideas to, to separate the speckled and the spotted and the plain animals. And then Joseph came forth. Joseph was sent ahead. 
And he came into Egypt, and then he lived with Pharaoh, and then he said to his father in a time of famine, come closer to me. So there's a Joseph anointing upon this house. It's a governmental anointing. Uh, it's, a, it's a strong governmental, financial, economic anointing to restore, to replenish, to be fruitful, and to make others fruitful. So you will see that God will send big corporate men, businessmen, into this house. And they will be filthy rich. They will come with their Ferrari. They come with their Porsche. They will come and be part of this community and you will feel out of place. But you, you will give them money. One day, I had an opportunity. I, I, I have a friend that is a wealthy farmer in the area where we stayed in Zerus. And so I had an opportunity to minister to them. Um, and everybody will ask this farmer for money for different things in community. You know, baseball club, and the rugby club, and this, everybody's looking for a donation. And he never holds anything back. They were big, big farmers. So we sat there one day, and I was ministering to him, and, and we became friends, and I, 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 I spoke to him and all of that. Um, and, and, and I, you know, I, I wasn't wealthy, and I was in the process of developing in Botswana. But then I said to him, one day, I, I, I had 100 rand in my pocket, and I took the 100 rand, and I said to him, I want to give you 100 rand. And the Lord says to you, that is not after your money, but he's looking for you. And the, the, the Lord, you, you need to know that. But you do good in, in society, and keep on doing that, but the Lord needs you to know he's not after your money. He's after you. He loves you, cares for you, and he appreciates what you do for people. Um, about 13, 13 years later, I had an opportunity to sit and talk to him again, and, and, and he took out uh, his pocketbook that he changed every year, and he opened it up, and there's the 100 rand. Carries it with him every day. So <clears throat> when, we, when we work with rich people, they have a lot of money, but their lives are messed up. Everybody wants their money. They're afraid they're going to lose their money. But if we learn to be fruitful and let thousands of rands going through our hands onto others, and see, and that's why these building projects and stuff is, is just to, to, uh, to, to, to exercise the spiritual arm. And the reason for that is that's how you come to the place, man, God provides. I'm not even going to think about it. I'm not going to be worried about it. The money's just going to come, and that's a prophetic word. The money's just going to come. And you're going to finish much quicker than what your plan is. Because God wants you to see that he's faithful. So that when he sends to you those that are in distress, those that need healing, you tell them, I'm paying for this year. And you, you fork out two and a half, three thousand for a meal. Because he ordered a, a, a Wagyu steak. Because for him, that's standard. <laughs> for you. <laughs> I saw that steak price the other day. I said, man, what is this special gold-laced steak? <laughs> I haven't eaten one yet, but I will. <laughs> but you know what? I understand what I'm talking about. So you are being tested in your faithfulness with the Lord and the Lord only. So that's why you, you have to learn. That the, you have to discover the faithfulness of the Lord by responding to God. So you must come and say, okay, let me take some money to somebody else. Let me take something and give it out because I'm fruitful. Because I'm fruitful, I'm doing that. So the Lord makes aware who you are and what he wants to accomplish through you. <clears throat> what we need to understand and what is vital about mercy you can withhold mercy even though it's within your power to help. Because mercy, mercy is when it's in your power to help somebody. So with the, the, the fact with mercy, you have always a strong party and a weaker party. And I'm, if I'm the strong party, that means I have the ability to help. 
I have the authority to help. That, that is what makes mercy. Because that person is dependent upon me now. So it's the same as um, somebody, <clears throat> um, you know, if you're a judge, you listen to somebody, and then you have to judge that individual on the witnesses and everything that is being said. But if the person can come to you and say, you know, I have this and this and this, and I ask for mercy, he reconsiders that because it's in his power and in his authority. So for us, it is locked up within our power and locked up within our authority to help and assist others and pour ourselves out into the lives of others. So the Lord will open up these things to you more. You, you will become wiser uh, in your going and, and, and you will learn through your processes and you will do what needs to be done. Um, the Lord will establish you strongly. Um, so I wanted to share that with you as the essence of who you are. I wanted to declare that over you. And there's a strong financial grace on this house. It needs to be stimulated. Uh, you need to stimulate it. And you need to grow in it. And you need to tap into it. You need to just make it stronger. And unfold it stronger. But there's a strong financial grace upon this house. Strong, 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 strong. Strong. You need, not, you need nobody. You need nothing. Uh, people will need you. Um, but you have the ability to provide for many. That's who you are. You are a fruitful vine. You are a fruitful son. So the, I ask God for scripture so that when I can prophesy and speak to you, I wanted to ground it in scripture so that you will take those scriptures and say, I identify with this. I identify with this dimension. It took Joseph long to bring forth his economic anointing. Now you have the grace of Joseph upon you. And what Joseph does, Joseph made Laban wealthy. Joseph made Pharaoh wealthy, even though he did also live in great wealth. Because when his father came, he said, let me go and show you my glory, show you all the things that I'm having. This is who you are. Declaring and decreeing over you, you, you are a house of mercy, you are a fruitful house, you are a house of protection, care, and compassion, but you are a, a very strong prophetic house. It's a strong prophetic grace upon this house. And there's a, there's a grace of a teacher on this house. I, I was just basking in the anointing of the worship, and it is so nice to be in the presence of the Lord. But I could see that they could have gone prophetically. But they did not. They could easily have gone prophetically. They could have just started to flow and started to flow, gone prophetically. It's there. I could see it easily. I, I saw it. I saw it. And the lady with the green also. Um, I could see easily how they could have just gone. Just gone. Um, but the Lord will kick in it. The Lord will go. So there's a strong prophetic grace upon this house. And, it's, and there's, there's a grace of a learned tongue. The grace of a learned tongue. Uh, Isaiah 50, verses 4. I want to read that to you. The Lord Jehovah has given me the tongue of the learned to know to help the weary with a word. He wakens morning by morning. He wakens the ear to hear as the learned. So 
So I'm giving you these scriptures, these words. You can take it, you can unpack it further and, and, and put more meat around it and give it more value for yourself. But when this lady that spoke this morning, when she spoke, I saw the, the wisdom and the learnedness in, in, in her words as they were speaking. And then the Lord uh, reminded me, he says, this, there is um, uh, anointing for the learned tongue. Because you, people that is in desolation needs to be instructed. So your wisdom is when you have to restore people, to recover people, and bring people back into where they need to be, what you will understand is, is that um, some people you have to be strict with them. Because they came into that place because they were undisciplined and, and all of these kind of reasons. So therefore, the Lord bring a prophetic grace because a prophetic grace has the ability to speak into the future of an individual, be able to bring a hope, exhortation, and build them up and lift them out. And then he also brings the tongue of the learned. So the, 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 the systematic building of concepts and designs, I see that strong in the environment. Amen. So you will unpack that um, as you go. Amen. So, um, I can, uh, you, you, the work that the Lord's going to do in your life, it's very quick. Quick, quick, quick. And you have to guard against um, uh, um, stretch, stretch marks. You have to guard against spiritual stretch marks. You have to, you have to pace yourself. Sometimes when a woman is pregnant, she will put vitamin E on her body because her body, the child grows too quickly, the uh, skin is stretching. So she has to protect the skin, put the vitamin E and all of those things on it so that um, she can look after the skin. So similarly, I see you growing quickly now. Quickly, you will be quickly full. Quickly full. Yeah, I see even a balcony because you, you are going to grow quickly and fill up quickly. And you, you're going to think that you've built too small. Um, but the Lord will facilitate what he needs to facilitate with you and do what he needs to do with you. Amen. So I'm proud to, to be your friend. Uh, I'm excited to, to see what the Lord will do in your midst uh, and how the Lord wants to unfold it. Amen. So um, I, I feel I want to prophesy to one or two people that I, that I see that I maybe... Maybe they just need some clarity um, and asking the Lord to, to help me so that um, we can help people to shift. Um, and I, I want to prophesy over Matthew and his wife. Can you guys come forward? <clears throat> just come and stand here. So you are still recording everything there on top. Am I right? All right. So I want to confirm to the two of you I want to come down. I want to confirm to the two of you, Matthew and Lauren, that there is a calling on your life. There's a call for ministry on your life. I want to confirm it. And um, there's, a, there's a teaching grace upon your life, and there's a grace of a prophetess on your life. Um, and in due season, you will be there. In due season, you will be in ministry. In due season, God will, and listen to my words, due season. So there's timings, there's certain things. So you've got to be patient. You, know, you must not push it. You've got to wait for the kairos. But in the meantime, you have to start to do the work um, even without pay. And I see you are working and you are laboring, but um, I see that, that the Lord will quicken certain things for you, for both of you. And, and, and uh, the Lord grants you grace to be able to... Um, to, to, to not outrun the Lord, but still teach, do your secular work for a season, and then when the, when the timing of the Lord is ready, the Lord will make the shifts available, and, and I'll do things for you. I see that the Lord, um, uh, you will be wealthy. I see you will be wealthy, uh, and you will have property, and, 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 but you will be wealthy, and you will have property, so the Lord will bless you, um, for, and I see these are things that you've asked the Lord and you've thought about and 
considered and all of that. And, but you will be wealthy. I see that. And, and you will have things outside ministry that you will have that you will manage. Um, I see properties around you. And you will do well in the world. Amen. So you, you will walk in the anointing of your Father, even though you will have uniqueness, but you will, you will walk in the anointing of your Father. Uh, it's already unfolding, but also there's a prophetic grace upon your life. I see from now on, God releases within you the ability to, um, to, to unfold as a psalmist, to write songs, yeah, to bring forth songs, to bring forth new songs, to take the word and write songs around the word, new words that's coming out and all of those kind of things. Um, that the Lord make that I see that, that ability, but I, the whole worship team, I, I saw them um, as, as psalmist grace upon the whole team. Even the sound guys, even the sound guys, I, I saw a, a very, very strong prophetic, poetic um, psalmist grace upon the whole team. And even some of the sound guys will write songs, but, you, but it, see, it will be dominant in your life. Um, and, but it's, it's, it's strong being part of this team. Amen? So, Father, I pray over this too. I want to dedicate them to you. Pray now for importation of prophetic giftings and prophetic abilities and that you will um, bring this prophetic grace upon them and, and quicken them in Jesus' mighty name. And bring them into places that you have pre prepared and planned for them in Jesus' mighty name. Give them peace. Give them calmness. You've given them direction. And thank you now for patience in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Bless you. I see the Barnwell family is here. They wanted to take this, the adult church over. Eh? They, they, they have some plans of, them, of themselves. So I'm just starting with them. Is that okay? <clears throat> um, this, you, you, the whole Barnwell family, come forward want to speak over you guys. Luke, are you okay? All right. I'm just starting with them. They're family. They're part of you, what they do. Yeah. <clears throat> Your name again? Liam and Cindy. Liam and Cindy, I wanted to also confirm to you, you have a calling on your life. But it is not going to come now, forth now. It will come later in your life. You are still going to work. You're still going to do what you need to do. But there's a pastoral grace upon your life. Um, a strong, compassionate, strong, caring anointing upon your life. The, both of you are a man and a woman of peace. You're a man and a woman of rest. Um, and I see that uh, you're like an oak tree, the two of you, like an oak tree. And many just come sit under this oak tree. And they come out of the... The, um, the, the environment, the sun, and they come in, into the shade, and they come and sit, and they, they come and find protection under the two of you. Um, the, the, the Lord gives you new creative abilities, and new creative um, ideas, new creative thinking, and the thinking that you have with the games and the things, it's the Lord. It's going to burst open, it's going to break open. And you'll be very successful in that. Um, and the Lord's going to take you there. But you will develop things for ministry. You will de develop things for kids. Those things that you are just talking about, those things will come. But know that, that there's a calling upon your life. But it's not a time for the activation now. I, I see that you need to be able to be part of society. You need to work in society and come on. But you will work in, you will work in church. You will be busy. But... Um, you will be more busy outside. So I feel the Lord wants you to know that, that at the right time, you will come forth. At the right time, the Lord will call both of you forth. Um, and I see uh, a lot of women sitting around you, um, and you speak uh, wisdom. You're a woman of wisdom. You're a quiet, but you're extremely wise, so highly intelligent. So you speak your wisdom and your intelligence into the life of women and girls around you, and you restore them, um, and you bring them right, uh, and you help them right. So uh, expect then some shakings in your marriage. Um, be aware of that, because that's alignment that the Lord brings between the two of you, so that 
he, he brings you closer together. So there's nothing wrong, but he brings you closer together so that you have a more accurate stance before the Lord. Amen. So both of you um, will bring wisdom in the companies and the place that you are. People will draw from you, and they will see that you are sons of God. They will see that. Then there will come a time that the Lord will just declare over you it's the end, and then he will shift you over uh, into ministry. Um, a very powerful uh, pastoral grace that it's like a royal race of pastors that you are going to function as for the Lord. Amen. I want to bless the two of you. Amen. Father, I thank you now for this couple, that you keep them, protect them. You've set them aside for you. And I thank you now that you seal them in the unity and their oneness. And I thank you that you establish their walk and that you will take them from strength to strength in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. Amen. Yeah. All right, Luke, <clears throat> you're the entrepreneur in the, in the family. Uh, and I see you will stay, I will see you will stay as an entrepreneur. I see on the moment, your back is because they said that God is busy with a realignment and an alignment in your life. It is busy with adjustments within your life, within your being, within your person. So uh, be aware that the Lord's going to help you to qualify well. I see the entrepreneur spirit will come stronger and come forth stronger. But the Lord wants to teach you certain things. He wants you to use kingdom principles, kingdom designs, and start to come up. I see you managing a conglomerate. I see you handling billions through your hands. Um, but it will come in time. And so the Lord will school you, the Lord will teach you, and the Lord will take you from strength to strength to strength. Amen? I don't, I know very little of the family, I know the least of you, but that, that's what I see. I don't know what you're doing now, and I don't know where you are now, but that's what I see over your life. I see, I don't see you in ministry. I, I, I felt it's important maybe for you and your family to know, but I don't see you in ministry. But you will speak to many in the church concerning that what you are doing. You will, you will teach many in the church, but you won't be in full-time ministry. Does it make sense? I see you called for the corporate world, you called for the entrepreneurial world. So you will still study, you will still do things, and you will still develop. Amen. But now, Lord, I pray for prophetic impartation, even for this too also. Um, pray for prophetic impartation for Luke, Lord, to see and to perceive what to do and where to do and how to do. To see deals and to perceive what and how they need to do certain things. And so for this too, for prophetic creativity, um, and creative designing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you guys. Thank you. <clears throat> um, is Renee here? Will you call her, please? I want to speak over Renee, Renee, um, <laughs> uh, and um, your daughter. I'll, I'll do that now. Wait for, I'm just waiting for Renee to come. Um, all right. <clears throat> the, uh, can I have your elders? I would like to speak over the elders, and I would like to prophesy over the, your leaders. Can, you, can I ask them to come forward? Yes. Yes. Um, we don't have a formal leadership at the moment, so those who are involved in different areas of ministry, some we don't carry titles. Um, I don't know what area yeah. you carry. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. And um, so if you, I'm going to ask that if your spouse is here, it's okay that the other one stands up. 
Yes. Yeah, that one. <clears throat> I'm going to prophesy over you now, if it's okay, if, you, if I can. Yeah. No? Um, I just want to pray for the leaders, and then I want to pray over Renee, Renee, and, and, her, and Lauren. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so, when... Why are you not standing here? Come. You started all of this this morning. <clears throat> you see, um, when you spoke this morning, you, you, when you spoke, you quickened in my heart and I went to look for the scripture of the learned tongue. Um, and as I was coming in this morning, what I will do in a congregation when I come in and it's new, I will look at somebody and I try to read you, uh, try to discern you, try to see what the Lord wants to do and how the Lord wants to do. And then I introduce you, say, this is an elder, this is a leader, they do this, they do that. I try to hear that, I try to listen to that. Um, but I, I could see that you need encouragement. I could see you need impartation and you need a launch. I, I, I could see you need the fire of the Lord, and, 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 and you need something, you need a quickening from the inside, because the, um, uh, uh, I just see that is needed now. Um, and I see that you don't believe in yourself as a son as you must. So I'm just perceiving and I'm sharing with you that because I'm going to break that down. Um, uh, I perceive that you, you, you maybe don't think you can teach proper. You, maybe you think you're not worthy enough um, and all of these kind of things. So I want to pray for you this morning. Um, and I would like to us to take hands. I want you all to take hands together. And then I'm going to pray for you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come in here and touch somebody in the middle and pray from there. And I, would, I want to, that, that power and strength to, to throw. And I will come lay my hands upon any, every one of you um, so that and this is what I feel that the Lord wants to bring it forth. Um, there's a place where lands are laying upon people and giftings are quickened inside the hearts of people. And tomorrow morning you stand up and you just want to do stuff for God, um, and it has to do with that. Just that and I see you need, the, you need that. You, you need that encouragement, and I, I feel that it, you need to bring it forth. Amen. Right. <clears throat> um, you, you have a very, very important role for the Lord. Um, and maybe in the future when we come again, we can do something prophetically and then take time, have more time, and then see where we can speak prophetically over more people. And, and to declare things more over every everyone now, but I felt I wanted to the I felt I wanted to quicken some of the guys that is important now for the father of the house for the house uh, and all of that and to come forth, amen. So <clears throat> can I ask you to take hands? So um, yeah, I'm going to stand here with the father of the house, and I'm going to pray. Uh, pray from, from I want, just want to pray from here. I'm just going to pray for the transferal spirit of, because we are one now. Amen. Father, I pray now for your leaders. Bring them before you. Father, I pray for the release of the learned tongue, of the tongue of instruction, the tongue to, to speak, to encourage, to build, and to, to help, to assist. But I pray now for passion, passion for your people, passion for you. A passion to be with you, to talk to you, to, to walk around with you, and, and, and to dream dreams, see visions. Uh, we pray for prophetic impartation yes. for every man, every woman in Jesus' name. Every man, every woman in Jesus' name. Even the house. Um, just, grasp, just reach out with your spirit now. Yes. Father, we thank you for impartation into this house. Prophetic impartation into this house, Father. 
And Lord, as I go from, from man to man and I, I lay my hands upon them, Father, I thank you that it's just a seal and a confirmation of an impartation. And so, what is your name? Hilton, I see that uh, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a ministry calling, there's a passion upon you, and, and you, will, you, you will just keep on doing what you are doing and even more, amen? But there's a calling upon your life, that's why you are doing it, you are compelled by the Holy Spirit, the Lord will give you acknowledgement for that, you will come forth in leadership, you will be known as a pastor, as a shepherd, as a carer for people, amen? And I, I wanted to confirm that to you, for you and your wife, the Lord bless you and increase you in every area. So can I lay hands upon you? All right. So Father, I bless this couple. Pray for great, great impartation into their lives, Lord. Um, great giftings to be unfolded into their lives. Prophetic abilities, impartation, and growth and increase in the prophetic in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you for that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Father, thank you. I bless this couple. I bless this young lady. So the, you two are together, husband and wife? Okay, there's a calling on your lives. Um, when you were standing there up front and you were singing, I could see um, a Kula Priscilla team um, uh, on, on both of you. Uh, teachers, able to teach the word, be able to go into dark and difficult places and broke things open, con sit people down and convince them about righteousness and the right things of God. Amen. So there's a calling upon your lives. In, in time to come, you will come into ministry. Uh, you will do what you're still doing now, um, but the Lord make known to you there's a calling. So um, keep your life, keep your functioning, keep going, and keep on doing the work of the Lord. Then your calling will grow, it will grow, and they will come transition um, into ministry in time to come. Amen? I think you will have your own church in time to come. Yeah. I see that you have that ability, but you have to believe that. All right? So you've got to believe that you're a son. I see that. You have to believe that you're a son. You have to meditate on it, that you're a son. And, and I see that before you will enter into ministry, God will bless you financially and raise you up financially. Uh, and great wealth that will follow you. Uh, I see that's needed for you as a person, as an individual. He will do that for you. And obviously, it's part of the family, it's part of the house, and it's a couple, and it will happen for both of you. But know that. Amen? So, Father, I thank you now for importation of gifts. And bless them with the blessings of the Father. Thank you for great increase in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. <clears throat> you together. All right. Yeah, I was wondering, I was, was trying to figure it out because I saw you singing there, and then I, I, then I see, okay, this is, they don't belong together. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, I see that you have the ability, it's like an engineering mind that you have. And I see you have the ability to, to solve complex problems um, and to, to, to like an uh, anointing of, you've got a no-nonsense anointing upon your life. You have the ability to talk to people and, and tell them straight, this is the way that what you must do, and they were going to keep you busy for hours on certain things. So there's a pastoral grace upon you, both of your lives. Um, but I see you will work. I see you will work, but you will do both. Uh, you, will, you will work with your, you will fight with the left hand and the right hand. Um, but you will function both. And there will come a time that the Lord gives you a choice. And you will have a choice. Will you, do you want to come into ministry? Do you want to stay where you are? Um, because I see the Lord open up the business world to you, and open up that sector to you greatly. You will be very successful, and, and you are going to um, be able to share a lot of things with people and a lot of businessmen and women that God is going to put around you. Business forums, those kind of things, that's what I'm seeing around you. You have great wisdom and understanding um, and that ability. You have the ability to teach. You have the ability to, 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 to bring solutions to people. And from now on, uh, you will bring solutions to many companies and places that you go. What do you do? You're an IT guy. Management. Okay, good. So I see that that will develop. You, you, and you are a woman of compassion. Uh, uh, you are a woman of, of care and of kindness and of goodness and all of that. But I, I, see, I see now a time of financial restoration. 
I see a time of, of I want to prophesy over you more than enough. That's what I see, more than enough. Not just enough, more than enough. I see the Lord has tested you, and he found you faithful when you had little. I see the Lord has tested you then when you had um, enough. But now the Lord says, I will test you, or I will give you more than enough because you've passed the tests. And, and therefore now, more than enough will come. More than enough will be your portion, and, and you will move and shift out of that. Amen? Yeah. So the Lord bless the two of you. I thank you now, Lord, for a strong grace and healing and anointing upon them, for the impartation of gifts that they need, with laying on of hands, Lord, to be able to do the work of the ministry in Jesus' name. So, yeah, you've got to be active here in this church. You've got to be active with people. You've got to be active. Uh, and, and, and even let your pastoral functioning come forth. The strong eldership within the two of you. Amen? Yeah. So, <clears throat> are you married? <laughs> oh, is this the one? <laughs> yeah. So, I see that you, you, you are fine-tuned and that you are um, you're a no-nonsense person. You're a structured, you bring order for people around you. So I see, I, I see that you have the ability, and there's a strong grace of an elder upon you. Um, are you an elder in the house? Um, I see the strong grace of an elder around you. Strong government upon you, on your shoulders, both of you. Um, I see you have the ability to pull straight that what has become crooked in the lives of people. But I see that you are a backbone. I see that you, both of you, are a pillar. You are solid. You are consistent. You are so consistent, you're even boring. <clears throat> you're always there. You, you know, you can just be taken for granted. So keep on doing what you are doing, and, 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 and you will grow in the Lord um, and you will function in eldership, and I see that you will bring many others into eldership. You will be able to mentor others and bring them into eldership and stuff. I see you're going to be exceedingly successful in, in that what you do, in your work that you do. I see you becoming, I see management, and I see you shift in executive management. I see you move from one company to another company. I see the Lord give you great favor as you're going to go and function from one dimension to another dimension. You are not in the place where the Lord wants you to be. Sure. <clears throat> you are not in the place where the Lord wants you to be yet. Um, you're not there yet. Um, and you have not accomplished yet what the Lord wants to do. It's as if he's not really started much. So now, they, now there will be acceleration. Now there will be forward motion. And now there will be momentum where you need to go to, all right? Okay, Lord bless you. You, as a family together, amen? You will walk together, and, and, and you are a Rolls Royce of a wife. <laughs> you won't think that, but you have a posture. You have a posture in the spirit, and, and, and the Lord say that to you, um, because maybe you waver, and you maybe think indifferent of, of, of that. So... Um, I see the Lord <clears throat> establish you, and I see the Lord bringing many women around you. I see the Lord bringing, and, and the wisdom that you have for a godly marriage, for, for a godly wife, for being a godly woman, I see you, I see you standing in the pulpit, I see you teach. I see you teach, speak, and impart, um, and you bring many unto the Lord. Um, many that are abused, be healed. Uh, strong grace of healing upon your life, upon your hands. Yeah, so uh, structured, orderly. Uh, see you how you teach them in the ministry. And you will, under the grace of the father of the house, um, you won't, will not even be in full-time ministry, but you will be called to speak into other congregations. There will be times and hours that they will call you and say, we need your grace, and, and, and I see you will be, and your father will release you, go and speak into that house, go and speak in that community. 
and you will go and you will speak. Even in the secular world, F and B will call you, um, APSA will call you, be able to speak into certain departments, certain things. So the Lord give you great wisdom and great understanding. Amen. So the Lord bless this couple, lay hands upon them for impartation of giftings to do the work that they need to do. And I thank you that you bless them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. <clears throat> so the Lord bless this couple. <clears throat> Bring them forth in great wisdom. So I see you being elders in this house. Are you elders? No, not yet. So I see you as elders in this house. I see you cemented here. I see you standing firm in this house. And I see you care for many and, and look after many. Mm. And I, I see you already can see, you can hear, both of you. You can see, you can hear, you can discern very well. Um, you can discern people uh, and you can discern situations. So it's possible, I see that you dream dreams, I see that you see certain things, but you're not aware of it. So the Lord makes it aware now and bring those things to you, the two of you. Um, you're pillars, you're solid. You're full of substance. You are righteous people. You are righteous people. When you walk into a place, you can change the atmosphere of a place. That is the weight and, and the substance that you carry in the spirit. Um, yeah, I, and, I, and I, I, see you, I see you work in labor for many, many years as an elder. As a, as a, as a, um, the word bishop comes to me. Um, the, that uh, I see the eye come like that. <laughs> you know, he can't see himself in these places and things. But I'm going to declare that over you. I, I, I see there's a ministry. I see there's a ministry upon the two of you. Um, and it will come later in, in your lives. Uh, it will just come. But the Lord's first going to use you to serve. So when they knock and when they, when they ask, don't, look, don't be afraid don't look back and don't waver in yourself. Amen? So, the Lord bless the two of you. Thank you for impartation of giftings that they need to do their work. Bless them and increase them in every area in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Bless you. All right, I've prayed for the two of you. I'm not going to do that again. All right. So, you're the instigator of all the trouble. <clears throat> you're the troublemaker here. <laughs> all right. So, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, the Lord used you to teach. And I see a Bible school develop. I see, uh, and you, I see you teaching there. I see you speak the word. And, and I, I see you getting involved so much in the life of the church. And so much involved in speaking um, and in teaching and, 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 and helping people to speak the word. So you have a learned tongue. And that learned tongue will develop even stronger. Amen. So the Lord bless you, and you're, you're not too old to activate many young people. So uh, I see the Lord touch your body, the Lord heal your body, the Lord do things for you in your body, and, and you will shift and move much easier, but you will be standing much longer. You'll be able to stand for an hour and teach, um, talk, and br bring great things forth for the Lord. Amen? So thank you, Lord, for your servant. I thank you, Lord, that even as you use that now to instigate a word here, that you will use it to instigate many to come unto the Lord um, and to be shifted to the things of the Lord, and that you speak wisdom in society and will encourage many at their houses and their homes to be lifted up and to lift out in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, the Lord. And take away even the worries of finances. Um, and I see the Lord bring something to you. You had concerns but the Lord deals with it. I want to encourage you in that. I see that the Lord will solve the problems, solve certain things that you've asked him, and he will do it for you. And, and in due season, in a short, short time, that what you've been worried about will just disappear. God will take it away. He will solve the problem for you. Amen. <clears throat> All right. So the two of you also, you are, I see you as part of the leadership um, you have the ability to lead people, to two of you. Um, and the Lord says you are worthy. Um, and you are sons. Um, it's kind of, many things are new to you. Are you new here or you've been here long? 
10 years. All right. Yeah. So I see now the Lord bring you forward. Are you elders in the house? Not yet. But you're working and you, you're functioning. All right. So I see that, that um, uh, the grace for marriage, understanding and the teaching of marriage. You see that you're a teacher of the word of the Lord. You are structured, you're organized, you are precise, um, you're detail-orientated. Um, I see that you have the ability to take a scalpel and to go even deeper and cut deeper and to open it up. I see you can do counseling, um, speaking to, to people around you. Uh, and, and I see the Lord, um, you have it already, strong word of knowledge, a strong word of wisdom that is upon your life, where you have the ability to, to give people great wisdom and understanding in, in how to solve problems, how to readjust certain things. I see women will come to you and sit with you, and you will just tell them, do this in your marriage, change that with your children, and do this, and they will just turn those knobs, and things will go smooth with them. Amen. I see the Lord bring counseling to you. From now, I see people is going to come to you at your home. They're going to come and sit and talk to you and drink coffee and drink tea, um, but they will just start talking about themselves, and they will ask for wisdom and ask for... The and you will just suddenly start to give it more because that anointing is resident upon you. Amen? That's going to come forth. So you travel. You, you, you the, the camper. <coughs> I used to camp and used to do that. All right. So, um, yeah, you, 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 you have the ability. It sounds strange, but um, you have the anointing for deliverance and healing. I, I, I see that. And so, um, sometimes just when people sit in your presence, you'll speak, and, 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 and the Lord will deliver them of things in their lives. Um, but I see um, uh, you and your wife will go, and you will pray for the sick. Uh, you will go to the hospitals. And I want to encourage you, that grace, I see the grace on your life. You have it. Um, you can pray for the sick, and the Lord will heal them. Uh, and, and use you in this environment and, and a strong compassion upon your lives that you have for people. I see you feed people. I see you giving them food parcels, uh, going to homes and see people in destitute and, and just go and give to them and help them and all of those kind of things and, and, and enter into the lives of people. And you are going to do, demonstrate the love that there is, that God, the love that, that we have for people, you will demonstrate that. Um, and, 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 and I see your garage full of stuff. People bring things to you, and you're giving it out to people, handing it out to people, helping people. But I see you also teach them and talk to them and tell them about truth. You're going to teach them financial concepts and designs and principles, and they will shift and they will come out and they will move into new dimensions. Amen? You will pray, you will pray for drug addicts, um, and I see the Lord deliver them. And... Uh, a strong healing grace upon your life. A strong healing anointing upon your life. And you, you guys have combinations of it. For you, it's in your hands, and for you, it's in your tongue. So meaning, you, be careful what you speak. So the wisdom of healing is in your tongue, meaning counsel, wisdom, and, and all of that. And for you, it's in the physical side, and to laying on of hands and do all those kind of things. So I want to encourage two of you. Amen? So Father, I thank you. I pray for this couple that you bring them forth, that you set them up in your kingdom, you bring them forth in this house, and you raise them up as pillars. Thank you that, you, that they are cemented, and when the, Satan wants to come and uproot them and pull them out and plug them out, that you will keep them in Jesus' mighty name. Any form of offense coming against them to be destroyed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you guys. Amen. I want to say to you, you are worthy. Both of you are worthy. You are sons of God. Amen. Right, you two together, good. So you're a, <clears throat> you're a dynamite coming in a small packet. <clears throat> uh, I see that um, you, you, you have great capacity. You have great stance and you have great ability in the Lord. Tremendous stature. Um, you, you, you have the ability to, you know, your, your poise, your, your whole de demeanor, the way that you function and your solidness and you have so much substance within you. I see that and I want to encourage you in that.
to, to you know, not, not, not much move you. And people can call you stubborn, and um, people can say all kinds of things to you, but um, uh, I see that stubbornness within you is the ability to stand. It's, it's that firmness that I'm talking about. People don't discern that right. They call that rebellion because they, you don't want to do what they want you to do. So what you do is you just say, no, I'm doing this and I'm standing here. And then another person will say, but you're so stubborn. But it's not because you're stubborn. You are like a train on a track. You stop at the station, but if all the wings and all the things that come against the train can't derail that train. And that train continue on from one station to another station. So this is how both of you are. Um, both of you are teachers of the word. Both of you are teachers of the word. Man. And, and, and I, I see you in church. I see you having your own church. I see a calling upon your life. So I, I, I want to make sure that's why I am, I, I am I'm, I'm looking this way and looking that way. Um, because when I saw you, I saw you teach the word. And when I saw you, I saw you teach the word. So if somebody have never told you that, that I sense you have a calling on your life. And, and, and that is going to come forth in this house. And you can, can be that the father of the house in time come wants to plant you out. And say, no, I need you to go and do this work for me, but I'm planting you and I'm putting you out somewhere. And plant you out and, and be teachers. And you, I see you teach the word of the Lord. Teach people and counsel people and instruct people concerning the way of the Lord. Amen? I want to encourage you too in that. I see that on your lives. Um, but you have to develop. You have to develop. Maybe you don't even think you can teach. Um, but uh, I see that. You'll be able to teach the word of the Lord. Father, so even from today on, I thank you that you give them impartation, prophetic impartation, uh, the, the, the impartation of giftings to be able to do your work of the ministry. Bless them with their children. Bless and increase them. Shift and propel them and give them great momentum into the place you need them to be. Thank you for passion. Thank you for desire. Thank you for the ability to do self-study. Thank you for growing in the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Bless them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Young man. <clears throat> so what do you do? What do you lead? I'm a school teacher in Sunday school. All right. So Father, I thank you. I relay my hands upon this young man. I thank you that you bring him forth with great wisdom and compassion, understanding, and I thank you, Lord, for helping him, and that you bring him forth with a gentle hand, a gentle voice, to bless children, to grow from strength to strength in Jesus' mighty name. I bless him in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. <clears throat> you are not together, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> um, I see you in the fashion world. Um, I see you involved in fashion. I see the Lord brings creative ideas in fashion. Um, I see a shop. Uh, I see business around you. Um, I see you having a shop with dresses and selling and all those kind of things. And uh, I don't know if it's a desire of the heart or if it's something, but I see... You have that ability uh, to be a, scene, to, a spirit of entrepreneurship upon you. I see you have the ability to buy and sell. You have the ability to, to be creative. You have the ability to dress women. Uh, you have all these abilities upon your life. Uh, you're already prophetic. You're, you're very creative. Um, you already can design. I see that structures on you. Do you believe me? Does it make sense? Yes. Is it true or not? It's a hidden truth. All right. So you have like a dream. Yes. All right. Okay. So it's in you. And it was always the Lord. It was always the Lord that given you that dream. So that dream will come forth now. At the right time, the Lord will open the right doors for you, and he will come forth. Um, 
I don't know if you're involved in music, but you have the ability to do music. I see you have the ability to write songs. I see that you don't think you can sing, but you can sing. Um, <clears throat> I, I want to encourage you in that. You are really gifted. You are really gifted, but many things are dormant in your life. Um, uh, but we're going to trust the Lord to break it. Amen? So, and then I see you also. Are you married? Okay. I nearly told you to get married. <laughs> Your husband, yeah? All right. Okay, good, good. All right. No, uh, you and your husband, uh, I see you growing in the business world. Um, I see you involved in the house and faithfully serving in the house, but I see you making great impact outside of the, outside of the house, in the business world, in entrepreneurship. I see those doors open up, and the Lord bring those things to you guys, and you make the impossible possible. Does it make sense? Yes. And things that were dreams now will start running, start floating, will start coming forth. You, will, you actually have given up on the dreams, but now the dreams will come forth, and those dreams will come also into your husband's heart. Amen. So the Lord bless you. Thank you, Lord. We can pray for this lady and for her husband, even though he's not here, but that you... That you Quicken even the prophetic more upon their lives. Bring forth everything that is dormant and bring them forth and catapult them into place they need to be in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right. Time of great joy for you that the Lord will give you now. All right. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> uh, these last will be first and he that is first will be last. So, yeah. Um, a woman of great wisdom. Uh, um, see a Proverbs 31 woman, ability to govern her house, but I see you have the ability to trade. Uh, I see a corporate grace upon your life. I see you have the ability to enter into corporate life, corporate business. You have the ability to, to speak to corporation. Um, I see that you have the wisdom within you um, and the understanding and the poise and the patience and all of these dimensions to be able to speak to, to people around you and to speak to people of stature. So in the church, I see you and your husband will speak to the rich. Um, you are positioned and you will be able to, to guide them. You will be able to direct them. Um, you have a, a certain stature in your being. Uh, and therefore, um, the Lord um, put a... I see an independent spirit upon you. But th this independent spirit is not an indifferent spirit. But it's a spirit to be connected to the Lord. So maybe you will from today and you will understand yourself better. But I see you have the ability to, to connect to the Lord to be with the Lord, and to stay with the things of the Lord. Um, and that make the people can't influence you easily. You kind of can stay on track. You can keep your ability. And that is the, for the purpose of ministry. You see, you and your husband will have a strong ministry in the church, but you will be strong in the world outside. And there are businesses that is closed, that is not open, that will open up. There is opportunities that is closed, you're not seeing it, but the Lord will open it up. It will come now. Um, great wealth uh, the Lord brings to you and your husband. And um, because he's going to bring you before kings, he's going to bring you before men and women of great stature. So you will dress well, you will be exceptionally wealthy. Uh, and, but but it, all of it will be for the purpose of the kingdom. So the Lord will bring you progressively bring the creative ideas, and propel you from strength to strength. Um, but know that, that you will work with people that are um, extremely wealthy, but they're corrupt. Your, you and your husband is going to work with corrupt people. And therefore, you have to have a very strong stance in the Lord because they will want to try to corrupt you because of their corruptedness. They think it's normal. But... The Lord position you, um, and it's part of the this structure of this house. When when the wealthy is going to come, 
and they need to be healed. And those of influence is going to come, and they need to be healed. You have the posture and the stature to speak wisdom to them and not them, let them influence you. Amen? So the Lord bless you. Uh, thank you for importation for herself and for her husband. Let it be like Moses in the camp that the, those even was not there that you've imparted into them. I bless her with great wisdom and understanding in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you. So, we're going to, I want to just prophesy over these ladies, then I'm done. But I want to encourage you to, the Lord wants to do a great work here. And I think the Lord's brought you all together so that he can launch you guys with passion for God's people. Um, I don't see everything, but I just see that it was just needed for now. And, and if there's anything that you don't agree with, go and write out what I've said, and I will sit and talk to you. I'll, we, we will, I, I will discuss it with you. If, if you don't agree, we'll take it to the pastor, and we will discuss it. Because sometimes if you're not involved in something yet, but I can see it on your life, and I'm speaking it over your life. Does it make sense? But anything that is not clear, bring it to the pastor of the house, the father of the house, submit it to him. Uh, so I see your future. I see your abilities in the Lord. I see your giftings. Um, and I see the potential where the Lord wants you to do. In your mind, if you don't fit into that, don't worry about that. Take the prophetic word. If you have witness with that, Say, Lord, let it come to pass. I pray over it. Pull me there. Bring me there. Uh, if you find that witness, that's very really important. Amen. So God bless you. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> yeah, I wanted to pray for Renee and Renee and, and Lauren. And... Um, and, and there's a reason why I wanted to pray for the three ladies. Just stand here in front of me. Um, uh, um, you are a woman of stature, and you are part of your fellow sons in the house, and so I honor and respect you. That's why I've asked you if you will permit me to pray over you. But I distinctly see a government, a prophetic government of a prophetess uh, on your lives. And... and, and um, it's possible that you think that you're just prophetic and all of that, but there's a place in the body where the, the, where the prophetess comes forth with great wisdom, great understanding, and they speak from that office, and a lot happen. So if it's not been said to you before, I wanted to, to highlight it for the three of you. I see the grace of a prophetess. And Renee, I saw that even when I was with you, but that day I never had a chance to speak to you. It's like the Lord didn't permit that, so I apologize. But, uh, because I needed to do that maybe before your congregation. But you, you are a prophetess, and you will become known as a prophetess. So I want to encourage you, all three, to now develop this grace um, and, and go to the Lord to say, all right, confirm for me that you've, bring, you've brought me here that I have this grace upon my life and that I have the ability to go forth and do certain things for the Lord because um, it's needed in this hour that the sons, even our female sons, come forth in the rightful place. Amen? So I, I want to just pray for you um, and, and um, to activate those giftings in your life. That's what I wanted to do. Is that okay? So... Father, I pray for Renee. Father, this son of yours that has um, been walking with you for so many years, I pray that you will bring her forth now as a prophetess. Bring her forth to pray for impartation of prophetic giftings, um, acceleration of those giftings that you've given her, boldness, let, break open, let it come forth, um, let it be heard, let it be seen, let she be able to teach prophetically, and let you lay things open and let her even be more accurate to see in deeper in deeper corners, but that she will tap into the heart of the Lord to discern the heart of the Father and to bring the heart of the Father into the hour, into this moment in Jesus' mighty name. God, just bring her into a new place in you. I pray for that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
Lauren, so I thank you now. I see that um, a psalm has come forth uh, with your husband, but uh, there's a uniqueness in you. And I see that in the music it comes forth, but I see that there's a prophetess in you, and the Lord quickens it and brings it forth. The Lord brings prophetic impartation. The Lord brings giftings to you, and he brings great wisdom for you. I see that in this house, not long from now, you will come among the prophets, and even you, Renee, will come among the prophets. And even in, in our family of sons, it will become known that you're prophetess. So the Lord will, you will bring word. You will bring wisdom on the table, prophetic, and give directions. And the father of the house um, will recognize that. I want to encourage you in that. So you, you need to be solid in, in your internal configuration, not be intimidated. But when the wisdom is there, to bring it. Amen? So, <clears throat> Renee, I, I, I see the Lord brings it forth. A woman of order, a woman of backbone, a woman of structure, and a woman that stands. <clears throat> I see that, that many onslaughts had come, but they could not take you down. So therefore, the Lord bring peace. Great peace, and I see that just, you just relax. I just see all the tension go. I just see that um, a great release from God the Father over your life. So a new hour, a new dimension, a new time, a new kairos, but a time of peace. So I see you lay down certain things that you've taken up. And the Father will now carry it himself. The, the Father will now really do certain things on, on your behalf. Um, and so you are the mother of the house. I see you walking around. I see you checking everybody out. I see you fixing everybody, healing everybody, caring for everybody. So that will continue. Um, but I see now the great wisdom, I pray for impartation, prophetic impartation um, of grace of a prophetess to come forth, to speak forth, to bring forth the oracles and the wisdom of God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Pray for that. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> they are fellow sons, so I have to honor and respect them. I have to ask them if they will permit me to speak into their lives and if I can pray over them. So I feel with that I would like to end it, Pastor Charles. Um, the, the purpose of me laying hands upon you is that that there's power of the point of impartation. And it's not just giftings that I have, but it's sovereignly giftings that God deposits in your heart because now you're going to come forth as a leader. You're going to shepherd these people. You're going to guide these people. And there's many of you that sit here that have similar abilities, but it's as if the Lord is not going to go that way now. But many of you will come into uh, to leadership, Many of you will come into eldership. Many of you will be pastors. You will have a heavy top structure of many pastors and many leaders that's going to come forth. And at the right time, I see some will be planted out. Some will stay, but some will be planted out, and um, many other churches will start and begin. Amen? So I speak to you what I see, what I perceive, and I can miss it. I can be wrong. Um, and if you feel there's anything that I missed, um, just speak to the, to the pastor of the house. He will contact me, and, and, and I will take responsibility of what I've said. And if I've missed it somewhere you don't agree, then we can sort it out. So the rule of engagement is to take it to write down, to write down what is being said, um, and word for word, because you don't hear everything that I'm saying. You're missing certain things. Um, and you write it down word for word, and then from there, you analyze it and look at that. And I want to say to, to Renee's mother, you will have great joy and great pleasure to see how the Lord fulfill your husband's dreams and your dreams, and great peace be upon you, but your ministry is, is not over yet. I see the Lord grafts you in and pulls you in 
A lot of your wisdom is going to come forth and it's going to unfold in the house. You, you maybe think that you are retired, but the Lord says, I refire you. I really, you really hear the Lord says, I refire you, I need you, I need your wisdom, and I need to bring you forth. Um, but you will see, you will have great joy to see uh, the unfolding of your children in ministry and even your grandchildren. You will see them even unfolding into ministry. You will have great joy, and the Lord grant you long life, and the Lord grant you health and strength. I see that. You will still live many years. I feel to encourage you. So don't go and die on me next week now. Thank you for sitting so patiently. And the reason why we did this in church is so that you could be a witness. You could be a witness to the prophetic word that's released and also be a witness to the lives that were spoken over so that when you see it happen, you will believe. Because some of you don't believe yet, but when you see it happen, you'll believe. And like Pastor Quirbus said, it, even though you're sitting there, you are not excluded. You are not excluded. There's a call on this house, and many, many pastors will be raised from this house. There will be many sent from this house to go and help other houses. And that's the call on this house. So please don't think, oh, as, as he was speaking, he was speaking over your life as well. He was speaking over your children. So receive that. And today we have received the prophet in the name of a prophet. And we have seen the rewards of the Lord being released in this house. And it's going to be done quickly. This year is a very, very significant year. This is our 41st year. We have passed that 40 generation. We're occupying. So the Lord is leading us into various dimensions of ministry in the earth. So thank you for your patience. You've been receiving grace today. So won't you stand with me? Just bring yourself to the Lord and just say, Lord, thank you for your word over my life. And maybe you're standing there and you're thinking, I needed a prophetic word. Lord, I needed you to speak over my life. I want you to hear his voice right now. Let him speak to you. Lord, thank you that we are yours, that your sheep do hear your voice. And I pray today for every family, every business leader, every future successful entrepreneur, every future pastor, elder, bishop in this house. I pray, Lord, that that mantle that's been the window that's been opened up, that mantle will rest upon many today. Rest it upon them, Lord. Thank you for the calling on this house. I pray your blessing, Father. I thank you for Corbus. I pray that, Lord, you will prosper him in spirit and in ministry. That as he speaks your word, his voice will now reach the corners of the earth. That many will seek him out to bring wisdom and to bring divine word into their place and season. Thank you, Lord, for his grace. We thank you for sending me here to Cape Town. 
in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Beloved, you know, as Quibus was calling us into that prophetic destiny of, of a house to manage large sums of money, um, I just realized as he was praying, there's so many people in the finance world. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's a, a, a very strong word over this house. There are some of you that are, are handling millions for your companies, and you thought it's for those companies. Um, it's because you're going to come manage it, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to need that skill of how to distribute money, how to manage it. Uh, and you, you would have been trained by the best in this world, but now you'll have the doctrine of Scripture to lean on, uh, but you'll have the skill of Egypt, <laughs> but you'll have the wisdom of heaven. Um, and you're going to be sending and dispatching millions to different parts of the world. Um, and you're going to be doing it in the name of the Lord, not in the name of APSA or FNB anymore, or the name of NetBank. Um, you're going to be doing it in the name of the Lord. Um, can you see that? So, Lord, we thank you for your word received over this house today, that this will be a place of mercy, that many will come and be restored. We give you glory and we thank you for it. Our hearts are excited. And, Lord, we are, we are challenged by this great calling, but we know that we will never respond to that challenge in the flesh. So we cause that which is of the Spirit to rise up today, anoint us, Holy Spirit, rest upon us, and quicken us for service in Jesus' name. And our church, may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with you all. And the church says, Amen and Amen. Tell somebody, I'm ready. I'm ready. As you go, I'm ready.